Hello and welcome. This is episode one, the first and final episode of this podcast series. It's really crazy to think that we would have been leaving for Spain in less than two weeks. I probably still wouldn't have a single thing packed in my suitcase. And I kind of gave up on keeping track of where my passport is when I found out that we weren't going. So I should probably look for that. On a more serious note, in terms of the trip, I was really looking forward to just the overall experience. I love to travel. So when someone asks if you could travel anywhere, where would it be? Um, That is an extremely difficult question to answer because the truth is I really don't have one. I know that there's so much to see out there and there's so much that I want to experience that everywhere is on my list of places to explore. I was really looking forward to Spain being the first one crossed off that list, but I'm still planning for that. I've never taken a trip outside the United States, so I'm really eager to experience a trip internationally to see what the world has to offer and to immerse myself in someone else's culture. I personally believe that traveling provides a lot of insight and reflection and self-growth, which I think college is all about. I also really um, like the educational aspect of the trip as well. I'm very much a visual learner and I learn best by doing, and I don't think I will ever find a more hands-on approach than what this class and trip has to offer. When I first found out the trip was canceled, I'm not sure I even have the words to describe what went through my head. I felt disappointment, yet it didn't seem quite real. And honestly, I still find myself wrapped up in the surrealness of this whole situation quite often. I remember reading Robin's text early Friday morning and thought that maybe I was still sleeping. Um, Just the day before, I was grabbing lunch before what would be our last face-to-face class and I ran into Connor. Um, We talked for a couple minutes just about the future of the trip and what that might look like. Connor was pretty certain that it would get canceled. He knew what was coming, but I didn't really know what to expect. At the time, I understood the seriousness of the situation in other countries like China, and that's when it really hit Italy. But I think it's human nature to believe that something this impactful isn't going to upheave your own life, but I was certainly mistaken. In terms of school moving online, that's been a huge adjustment for me personally. Um, I've had a little bit of a hard time staying on track and just staying motivated. In the past, I've dealt with mental health. I don't like the term illness, so I'll say I've dealt with mental health inconveniences. The biggest thing I can do to counter them is to stick to a daily outline schedule and just to keep myself busy, keep my body moving, and typically my brain will follow. For me, losing that routine has been really difficult. I'm so used to having a thousand things to do. I start my day off early with practices, and then between class, working two jobs, and trying to maintain some sort of social life, losing most of that in a split second is hard to fathom. On the bright side, Um, I still have a lot to be grateful for despite all of this. I've learned to slow things down. It felt strange at first when there wasn't something that needed to be done every waking minute, but I've learned to really appreciate that. I started painting again and um, getting back into books that I didn't have the time to finish. I started practicing meditation again. I've been staying connected with friends through FaceTime and Zoom calls. I'm fortunate enough that I didn't have to change places. I still live in my apartment um, in the south side, so I still have access to the city. I can still take long runs, ride my bike, uh, kick a soccer ball at the park across the street. I'm still working at one of my jobs, which is in a restaurant. Sales aren't what they used to be, obviously, but I'm still lucky enough to have some sort of income. But because of that, I am limiting the time I spend around my family at home. I've been seeing them usually every other week, but I was really grateful to spend my 21st birthday with my twin last week 
It's definitely not how either one of us pictured it, but I know that we'll get the rest of our lives to celebrate properly once this is all over. Going back to Spain, the media visit I was most looking forward to was Condé Nast. Advertising is my minor in a field that I'm interested in career-wise. So visiting and seeing firsthand a media company with as high as a reputation as Condé Nast would have been insane. I admire the work that they produce and the fact that they've worked with some huge names like Vogue, Glamour, GQ, and Vanity Fair is crazy. Additionally, I was looking forward to meeting Judy Cantor. I know almost nothing about Latin music, but I think it would have been super interesting to hear her story. She sounds extremely successful, and I feel like I would have learned a lot from her, uh, just about the path that she's taken to get where she's at. I am definitely making an effort to travel Spain in the future. My plans are to go with the class next spring and possibly see if I can somehow involve my capstone as well. Um, this opportunity was something that I've been looking forward to for months, so I am determined to still make it work. In terms of the effects that COVID-19 has had on our society, um, this pandemic has impacted every single part of the world. It's hurt the global economy, it's changed how people interact with one another, and it's been a spotlight in both health and politics. Throughout the course of COVID-19, the United States has handled it poorly. We had an opportunity to get a head start in preparation after seeing the devastating effects that the virus had on China and Italy, but chose not to. We've learned that the coronavirus tests are limited to everyday people, but not for the rich if they wave around enough money. We've watched how the United States government operates in a time of emergency with more than 26 million Americans filing for unemployment. And as that number continues to rise, people struggle to obtain benefits and some others are losing healthcare coverage. Rather than opening our eyes and using our voices to stimulate change so that every citizen can have access to basic needs and services, people are doing the exact opposite. They are instead begging for places to reopen and demanding that they have the option to get their hair cut or whatnot or to leave their house simply because they want to. While doing this, they're unsafely forgoing CDC guidelines. They're putting themselves and everyone else around them at risk. It's simply a blatant disregard to the sacrifice that healthcare workers are making and everyone else on the front lines. It's selfish and it makes me angry and it's heartbreaking to watch. And I hope that we as a nation do not go back to normal when this pandemic is over, but it brings about a new era of change that we so desperately need.